kung fu passes and 30 plus knots is it is silly <laughs> why are we doing it and it's because we want to win king of the air i mean i think if you win one you will be a great for forever i mean it's that big a thing it's like king of the air you just take it so much more serious because it's like nothing else can compete with king of the air You know, um, the youth are slowly like knocking on the door. They want to get in there, and there's a few riders uh, competing this time. So all the all the um, old dogs like Aaron and Kevin and myself, and we will get a lot of competition from all from all these guys. Aaron and Nick, they're like I think 33. Kevin, they're around 33. I'm 31 still, but I've got a lot to achieve still. Um, I think I think Mark. Uh, have had so many chances at King of the Air, but never really had the. He never really had had his time to actually shine at a at a contest. Yeah. this jitter kid he's always hanging around with all i see is mark this massive hulking human next to this small japanese me he's japanese right yeah jitter japanese oh, what are you... all right is this your first interview yeah how did you meet mark uh one day like on the beach and then i i thought like he was like fake mark at the beginning because yeah, like he looks like Mark Jacobs, but like, nah, he's not here. I was like, but like, yeah, I, I just said hello to him, and are you Mark Jacobs and stuff. But like after, yeah, a few months, like he, just yeah, I think he start having me like for the crew, like as crew, and then like yeah, so. Like I'm feeling nervous for him now, yeah. but yeah, I don't know. Like it's just weird. I've never had like this kind of things before. Like my friend competing like big in the big comp or something. Yeah. If you're not motivated to be in it and and do well. I don't think you should let sponsors force you. You should find a way that works best for you. But it depends. If you're competitive, then 100% it's a big opportunity. You don't want to miss it. But if you're not competitive and you really don't want to do it, then I think it's best to have a chat with your sponsors and see what's best for you. Yeah. All right, we may as well talk bigger. You yeah. excited to be competing in the King of the Air? Yeah. Can you remember Tom Bridge as a young kid? Were you around? Like, yeah, yeah. What was he like? Yeah, he was a prick. Still is. <laughs> like, he wouldn't change anything for the public or the crowd on the beach or if he thinks uh, flat seven taking off toe side with 11 different grabs, he'll do it. No matter what the judges will judge that. They'll probably, they won't probably even judge it, you know? Two days ago is a perfect example. Uh, he does like a pop stylish 180 down a wave coming in then he goes into a chrome mob and then he goes into a 
a sand beach drag slide carve and then he goes into a back mode five and then was it a flat five and i was just like what the heck was that like asking him about it and he's like i didn't even i didn't even think about it, it just happened it, like being able to do that and just flow like that it's just so sick to watch I'm taking up someone else's spot. Do you? Yeah, hundred percent. I'm sure all those big air kite league boys, or whoever actually does big air, is like, man, Tom, Tom Bridge in here, he shouldn't be in there. He doesn't do big air. He doesn't care. Which I agree with. They should, probably should be in. But uh, no, definitely, I'm taking up someone's spot who would do better than me. Everyone thinks second round knockout, and even I think that. So it's all good. Um. Are you, is there, have you got a kind of list of things that you might do in the, in the back of your nah. mind or are you just going to completely wait? No, nah, I need to go out on, I need to go out on Wednesday and actually do some bloody kite loops and put in some time. Couple of sessions Wednesday. Yeah, couple, yeah, could be a big day Wednesday. Oh. Come on, Heat one. Right, where have I got to go? Mate, you can take down Kevin. Champagne supernova in the sky. Thanks, bro. Come on. How are you bro. feeling? You good? <laughs> Strong? <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> you can, you know, go and go and go, and there's just nothing up there. Yeah. Hit one of the first ones. Okay. <laughs> Easy. And it's the gonna one. look high up with the judges. That's what. Yeah. Here we go, Tom Bridge, Ayrton Cozzolino. You do not see this in competition normally. That's Tom on the Red North Orbit with the Red Bull logo and the Red Bull helmet. Daydream, I fell asleep on the Ayrton Cozzolino, second King of the Air appearance and the first person ever to compete strapless. Yes, I said correctly, strapless. He's got no straps on his board, so basically every every maneuver he's got to board off. I dream of you amid the flowers for a couple of hours. Such a beautiful day. Oh, that's a good example of how difficult it can be to land when you don't have straps. Okay. Daydream, I fell asleep amid the flowers for a couple of hours on a beautiful day. Daydream, I dream of you amid the flowers for a couple of hours. from the Netherlands, rookie, first time King Lear appearance for him. Getting good distance, good height, good control. That's what the judges are looking for. Oh, this is the trick. You saw a nice kick on the inside. Into the front row with the board off. Look at that, he's stopping at 8 one 4 From New Zealand, Mark Jacobs, a frequent contender here at the King of the Air. Loads of hearts on that one, Jim. Plenty of hearts there by Mark Jacobs. 
we know he's got the hype factor on his side, but Mark Jacobs, as you said, very aggressive. There's Mark Jacobs, one, two. And he's gonna get another one in on the way down, super controlled. Um, <clears throat> I think this he landed his tricks, didn't he? We have like, yeah, so many spots in New Zealand and then, yeah, I've been just following him and then like he took me to like, we were so many places like, and I've been like, um, marking, like check, list, like checking like where, where I went. Like there's so many spots in New Zealand. Okay. Flat spot, flat water, good waves, yeah. and like, yeah. <laughs> if um, if he does win, I think it's a big party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just retire party. Retire party. He will retire, mate. He, you win. Because you can have really bad injuries, you can have like serious, like life changing injuries. And if I did, and if something went wrong mid loop and all this shit went wrong and I got really injured doing big air, I'd be f so annoyed because then I, that would ruin everything. <sighs> Mate. Yeah, I think it was always to be freestyle to world champion. So do you reckon there's actually no future in freestyle then? Uh, I don't think, I wouldn't say no future, I just mean it is, I don't see it getting better. I think it's kind of going to be how it is. You know? Which is it, what though, what's the state of it at the moment? Well, it's, the glory days were PKRA days, weren't they? Because there was no big air and freestyle was just saying the, the main discipline back then where now it's not big years way bigger is there any part of you that wants to do gka now is there anything that you look at that and think that's i want to be part of that no no i mean the thing is that tom has such a massive freestyle pass right i mean the guy's a, a junior world champion and, and when you speak to like people like maxine chablot and that when they were younger they didn't even want to be anywhere in near tom season if you were in tom semi-final you basically were going to get third in the competition because he was so far ahead and i just really think it's a shame that he hasn't taken that and run forward and, and try to bring a freestyle to a freestyle championship back to the uk you know it's been a long time since aaron hadlow and uh you know 
England always had great freestyle people. You had that sort of early days of that sort of the UK crew, but it's been a long time between, between drinks for British freestyle. And I, I do still think Tom's the man for that. And I think he still can do it, but whether he wants to, you know, that's the, that's the key. How are you going to prepare for this, King of the Air? How many kites you got? Dos. One, actually. One big air kite, nine metre orbit. I actually found a hole in it earlier. What? Who's <laughs> <laughs> that? Who are you? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> How many boards you brought with you? One. How many bars? One. How many, how many kites has Mark, Mark got? <laughs> like, no, 10? Yeah. 10 or 12? Yeah. It's two of, it's 10. Two of them. 10, six bars, four boards. Yeah. Fair enough. Almost. I, th I think it's more the kiting, kiting side of things. Like, I'm, I'm the, I'm, I'm the clown in a way. I'm like that stunt clown. And uh, it's a nice hat to wear, because then when I go back home, I can be a bit more private and a bit more, you know. Yeah, it's just for the show. You know. Without the hat, do you think you'd be where you are today? Was that key to your success? Um, maybe, I don't know. Nick's a good example, right, of, um, you know, of winning the 2017 King of the Year. I mean, that really, that really built his career. His career was sort of, is that's the foundation of his career now. Before that, he was doing, you know, stunts, jumping off towers and stuff like that. But this was the foundation that put him into greatness. I think uh, it's a testament to a champion of how you, how you act as a champion. Uh, do you want to be a conqueror or do you want to be a king? Those are two different things, right? So uh, there are people who have conquered that title and uh, that's them. They're happy. And, and that's great. But then there's guys who are kings, they want to set up reigns, they want to be known as the greats and be multiple time champions. So uh, that's, uh, I think that's the difference between winning it once and going on to win it multiple times. <laughs> Nick Jacobson in the blue vest, heading out towards the iconic Robben Island. On your screen right there, Angelie Bouillon, the only woman to have ever competed in Red Bull King of the Air. She's an absolute hero. Loads of hearts and they're just getting this just, like, just easing off the nerves. If there's anybody who takes a competition and as relaxed as possible, it's Nick Jacobson. This isn't the featherweight, there's no dancing around the uh -huh. ring. We're not going to see multiple, multiple rotations. We're going to see big, dirty kite moves. Just the move that Nick does, I mean, and nobody else seems to be able to fly with one foot in the board. Delaying 
bring that board off Mega Loop. Look at that. Full extension. Superman. Board off Boogie Loop there from Kevin. Did he get that board back underneath his feet? No, he did it uncharacteristically there. Plain white line there from him, but he should be fine. That would have been the first time that we'd seen him land that in competition. You go credit to him going for that maneuver there. You know, it's at that stage in the competition where he's got to find the difference, isn't Nick? With the front roll with the one foot at the top, is he going to land it? Yes, he is. Well, Kevin scratches around for his board. Nick might be eking out more of a lead at the top. I told you this was a heavyweight boxing match. You know, one of his last runs. How are the kids falling? Is he going to go for it again? Here we go. Hey. Get into the he's done the board off. He's done it this time. He's got more time to get your run. Looks like he's got it. That's why he's oh, really tired. Red Bull keeping him in the air. That's why. Always great riding against them, and uh, I think in the Elden on that last one. Yeah, we'll see, you're eating good yeah. You're on top. That's competition. Yeah. We love it. And we Tom it. just getting some advice. I think his brother's here, Guy. Guy will be checking out the scores. Guy himself, incredible kiter. Really, really good big air kiter as well, but a, a really, really good top level racer. Yeah, I don't think I'm the heaviest, but I'd say I, maybe I might have the most muscle mass for my frame sort of thing. It's definitely important, especially if it comes down to Kung Fu passes. And even yesterday was a perfect example. I um, got hit with a gust going off a wave and I sent it and just the load up I had, the bar almost popped out my hands on the way up. And I was just like, wow, like, <laughs> yeah, what am I doing? Like, why am I doing this when it's not kicking in the air? But it's just, you know, just wanted to get comfortable in strong winds. And it's just like, yeah, when you start your cut, uh, most people go on a 500 calorie deficit. That's quite aggressive. I like to start around like 300 and just modify every week. Modify, modify. Because the leaner you get, the more stubborn your body is. Your body isn't designed to get shredded. You've got to trick it. Um, but you these healthy ways of doing it without your body getting stubborn and trying to hold on to that fat. And I was around 95. 90, Three months ago. Yeah, 95 kgs, just over 95, like 95 and a half. And now I'm around 87. I mean, Mark looks like a Greek god, right? Yeah, he's just, uh, he's literally, uh, he's an, isn't he an underwear model? So hopefully, I hope for him it's going to be this year. Because um, he's so determined. He's so, um, like, he's goofy. So he would do all the tricks coming in. He just learned all the tricks going the opposite way. It's like throwing a ball with your left hand, which is pretty impressive. It's just sticking to it was hard like especially for the first year because I sucked at it <laughs> I sucked if I was comparing I was <laughs> I was like basically a beginner learning big air to like the most advanced technical ride in, in the world and that was my switch and yeah. regular so yeah it took a while to catch up and Mark Jacobs have been lighting it up. Tom Bridge hits the kicker on the inside pretty nicely. Back roll, here we go, unhook. 
into a blind landing. He got it. No one else is landing that in the competition. I must admit, for a little bit of time there, I was a bit worried. I was like, what's going on here? Mark really needs to get going. Are we going to see a potential um, upset of uh, these two teammates? Showing his ability to control his landing, riding with boots. As Tom Bridge heads out towards the back. Oh, yeah, that kick has just completely flattened out in front of him there. Mark Jacobs said, "Okay, I think I know how to do it. Let me show you how it's done. Look at this perfect timing of the kicker, taking the board. Look at those lines, completely horizontal in front of him. Uh, unreal, Mark. Also, a test rider for North as well. You can see how much time." He must put into uh, riding that orbit, just knowing exactly the moment and how hard to pull on that bar to get the kite to swoop level with him. But what we're seeing from him, the difference we're seeing from him this year is his ability left foot forward to hit the kickers. You know he's got the handle pass in the bag, but we've got less than two minutes. There we go, great timing there. Aggressive contra we've seen. But that contra there by Mark, we didn't even see that score drop as it was so close towards the end of the heat. We will see it now. It's Mark Jacobs with that contra. Take a look at that, Jim. A 9.04. You've got to go at Liam hard and you've got to just keep going against Liam Whaley because Liam's going to come out hard and fast as well. The first two tricks are going to be really interesting. But Liam Whaley by far having the highest total score and individual scores of the event so far. Mark Jacobs would know that. I feel his work is a bit cut out for him, but Mark Jacobs is going to go for the Contra. Use Contra, he's going to get back underneath. Whoa! A nice low cut looping angle there from Mark Jacobs. Here we go, Liam, powered. Released his edge just for a second before taking off, just to get that extra kick. Ooh. And that comes from Mark Jacobs putting pressure on. Two scores early on. And here's Mark. Wow, how early is he pulling that kite loop, Colin? How early and radical is he pulling that? That's wow. But Liam Whaley's not done. Perfect timing off the kicker. Oh, very aggressive. Mega loop late back. Oh, is he going to get underneath? Oh, that kite was right in front of him. Oh, it's going to score big. Jim, six minutes left. Yeah, it was an important one for Liam to land there because Mark's been like, you know, dealing the punches consistently. Mark Jacobs from New Zealand, the ticket kicker should line up nicely. Oh, what a contra loop. Wow. Wow. How is Liam Rayleigh going to ride with his back against the wall? 22 points against 15.88. What can Liam pull out? He's Mark on a mission. Should, Mark should drop off the 7.04. There we go. Here we go, there we just spoke about the handle pass, Kung Fu pass, very high, he should land this one, two rotations on the way down. Mark with his own version on the inside. Liam Whaley, well, he unhooked. Goes, unhooked on the outside. Oh, this, this is time. a very aggressive handle pass, back roll handle pass, covering a massive amount of, he should land it. Wow, that was sheer commitment, his kite was literally at 11, 10 o'clock, off to the left, on the you couldn't have asked for a more spectacular finish. Oh my Mark goodness. Jim. <laughs> Mark Jacobs seeing himself through. Shocking up here. Liam Whaley. Liam Whaley will be absolutely gutted. But Mark Jacobs through to his first King of the Air final. My goodness. How was that, buddy? How was it? Oh, yeah, good. You okay. can't complain. I'm in the podium, uh, in the podium and final, and yeah, it's my birthday, so <laughs> good day. Bro, I think it's as close as what happened last time. Remember? Yeah, dude. But have, have you got someone help you score? I think. Yeah, I want to say. They do things. You got this, bro. Ah, uh, yeah. uh, seriously, did I know? Yeah. Was, yeah. Uh, who, who did you know? Did you know anyone else? Ah, uh, not really. Yeah, just Mark and I've been meeting all the legends here. 
kind of too much. Like I think I need to stop doing that. Otherwise, like it feels weird. Uh, I don't know. It's just because like he, like heroes, like have to be like hero, yeah. like in my mind, like like yeah, forever. Do you mind us talking about what was going on for you at home before you came? Yeah, that yeah. Um. Uh, a lot of people don't know, but Mark got married earlier. It was Sophie, his his fiance's mother is dying of cancer. They brought forward the wedding so um, she could see this before he went to King of the Air. We got all the photo memories and everything and fulfilled uh, my wife's dream and her mum's uh, before I came here. Because we just, we just looked at it and me being here and then having to quarantine after this, it's like almost six weeks and it's, and if she goes, you know, it's going to eat it will eat us for like the rest of our lives. So we just went for it. I mean, the guy was not going to go. I mean, with all the work he's put in in two years, that's the crazy thing. It was so weird to hear him say that after working so hard for two years, he actually considered not going. I just kind of looked and was like, this is going to be too much for me if I'm there with everything going on. I see Sophie struggling and I'm and I'm just like, this is I can't just go. So I said to her, I don't want to go and she's like you have to go you have to go and then I was just like okay like I just gotta go for it like obviously it's my dream my goal for like the last I'd say the last five years um, but now I've got more of a reason to do well and yeah I've got more to fight for for just myself so yeah who do you, uh, who do you hope's gonna win Man, big mark is eh? Surely this year, he needs to win. <laughs> now he win, he will win. Yeah, I'm not thinking like <laughs> like that. He he doesn't win. Yeah. yeah, he will win. Yeah. Nerves to get in the final, as you said, the adrenaline and the nerves. We've waited 18 months for this, and here we are. Cast a shadow on the shadow of it hurts. Two feet are swining, need not cast its There is just no way out of that. It's full commitment. It's full faith in your equipment and in your ability. Big guy 
Maybe he's got an elbow out of the way at the moment. We know he can do it. Look at those lines building up. We know he's got the ability to hold his edge. Wow, I almost want to put my money on that one being the cement in this thing. But that was aggressive. Kai was right in front of him. He'll be awarded a lot of points for extremity there. Stomp after stomp after stomp, Mark Jacobs.